Hi folks, it's Andy and welcome to today's Kendo Rant. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Let's get right into the questions. Okay, regarding the question about shouting, uh, I, was won I wondered about what players in the All Japan Kendo Championships uh, ki when it comes to being in Super Zeri Ai. Some yell something sounding like otot ot ototota ototota. Uh, and other random phrases. Uh, are they actually saying something? Okay, so yeah, I know what you mean actually, yeah. They kind of, um, lots of them kind of have these kind of short, kind of, ah, da, 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 kind of uh, <laughs> uh, shouts, you know. Um, but it's, yeah, I don't think they're actually saying something. It's just kind of a, a kind of vocalization of the spirit, if we can call it that. Um, it's just, a, it's, it's just a, a vocalization. I don't think they're saying anything particular. Sometimes you hear people say, um, especially like senseis and stuff, uh, sometimes they say stuff, um, that, or at least it sounds like stuff, um, when sometimes when they hit a point, for example, instead of just saying men, like some of them say like, oh, oh, oh men, oh men da, and stuff like that. It's like, that was men and stuff like that. Um, but you know, generally no people don't actually say something. <laughs> anyway, um, next one. Andy, a question about foot position in Hidari Jordan. Uh, do the feet still go both straight forward or does the right foot tilt to the right? Thank you. Uh, okay. So this is obviously based off the last video. When I, the question was, is it okay to turn your feet to the left or uh, turn your right, r left foot out, I think was the question. Um, and I said, no, you've got to keep your feet pointing forward. Uh, that was in the case of Chudan no Kamae, which is what we generally start with when we learn. Um, in uh, Hidari Jordan, which is left Jordan, the left Jordan posture, your body is actually in what's called Hanmi, where you're actually stood sort of side on. So your feet are actually pointed slightly um, slightly out to the right okay um which is another reason it's really important really to be honest to get chewed and sorted um before you kind of um do too much um with with jordan and stuff like that um in i think a lot of high level thinking about this I'm, I'm obviously thinking about this as i'm talking about it but probably there's quite a few high level jordan players that are doing Jordan with the Shinai actually still have their feet <clears throat> sort of pointing forwards um, because obviously they're looking to launch themselves straight forward. Uh, but certainly in the kata and stuff like that, um, it's actually turned slightly to the right. Um, okay, so next. Hi Andy, two or three times a year I get the chance to go out of town and visit another dojo. Uh, it's exciting to be able to practice with new people, especially when visiting a strong dojo. Other than following how the dojo does things and acting appropriately as a visitor, what kind of things do you focus on, uh, and I assume you mean me personally, when visiting another dojo? Uh, and do you have any advice on making the most of this rare opportunity? So what do I do when I visit another vo uh, dojo? I, I just try and practice with as many people as I can, particularly whoever is in charge there, whoever's the main teacher, I'll definitely try and uh, get a practice in with, with whoever that is and then I'll do my best also um, to uh, uh, practice with um, as many of the students. Um, my, my kind of main focus will be to get as much experience to practice in as many people as possible. Um, and I think that's the best thing you can do, really, to make the most of such an opportunity. You know, do your best, especially to practice with the teacher, uh, get the advice of the teacher, and uh, practice with as many people there as you possibly can. Um, I definitely think that's the best way of making the most of it. Uh, next one. Uh, hello, Andy. Can you please explain your thoughts on effective chudan no kamae uh, to hide as much as possible the kote? <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I used to do come in front of the mirror to understand how I present myself to the opponent so I can see or discover weak spots on my stance. The point is that my come tends to expose the kote a little too much, so I often get hit on the kote. Should it be because I incorrectly hold the shinai with my right hand or my left feet is not parallel enough to the right feet? During my Mitori Geiko seconds, I, sessions, I focused a lot on their come stances uh, and I see the come is sort of hides very well the kote, but when I try to do it, it looks strange because I try to land my arm on a more straight position, wrist parallel to the shinai. Both hands tend to sit a little to the right side of the body, uh, so no more center line. Um, the positioning also makes the shinai uh, to sit in a more parallel position in, compar in comparison with the floor as a result. Uh, I saw some colleagues that do that kamai. It looks odd because the body is sort of a little twisted, just a bit to the right side. 
sorry, I'm just kind of glossing over it a little bit. Do, it's quite a long question. <laughs> uh, do you think this is acceptable? Should I simply twist the tally a little to the right side? Um, <laughs> LOL. Uh, the fact of having a right leg forward position kind of helps the body twist a little already. Um, the best picture to understand what I mean will be looking in the mirror at your kamai and your left hand will be sitting more towards the edge of your right side of the tare where the zekin is rather than the center line so the kote can be hidden effectively. Okay, um, right. Okay, there's two two real important things I want to say about this. First off, you don't need, you shouldn't, I don't think you should think too much about hiding the kote in your kamai. Okay, um, for me, when you're doing the, the chudan, chudan no kamae, uh, and uh, I'll see if I can stand up so you can see it, but as I'm st stood straight on, it's a bit hard to see, obviously, with the... Uh, I'm trying to stand in front of the actual lens on the phone. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to hold it this way, so I'm holding and kind of blocking the kote like this. This isn't an effective way to do. The best is to, to hold it straight on the center line, personally, I think. Um, if you're doing this properly, they, there isn't an effective route to your kote here for your opponent, okay? There just isn't an effective route to it. What they can do is they can try and step out the center line and try and hit it, but it's actually a criteria of you called the totsu for kote that they have to have disturbed your kamae. So if you find yourself getting hit on the kote a lot, you probably find that um, it's not just your kamae that's an issue. Probably you're finding that your hands are moving slightly and it only needs to be a tiny amount. It only needs to be that much, only needs to be that much. That much is enough, yeah? That much is enough for them to get a, a route into your kote, right? So um, I think it's more about that rather than the actual position of your hands. Your hands need to be in the middle, not off the, to the side like this or anything like that, trying to thinking about blocking your kote. Um, instead, um, I think the issue is that you're probably more affected by your opponent's uh, semi. Um, and that's why um, they're actually breaking your kamae and then getting a chance to, to, to actually hit your kote, um, if that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'd, I'd focus on holding it straight, not, not holding it like in a kind of off, off shoot or something like that, right? Um, and then uh, consider whether you're being hit on the kote because your opponent's moving around you, in which case you need to kind of be a bit more on the ball and follow them. Um, or your hands are moving very slightly in order to give them that chance to hit you. But if you are in a standard kamai with your hands dead in the middle, the shinai in the correct position, they don't have an effective route to your kote. Uh, okay, um, while practicing saburi with bare hands, we learn to correctly hold the shinai making the V format uh, on both hands so that you can then sit s smoothly in your hands, right? Uh, the point is when you put the kote on, <coughs> Um, I'm not able to hold the shinai in the same way. Uh, the kote is too hard and I end up holding it like a hammer in both hands. Any tips to do uh, easy the kote so I can uh, hold it correctly? Uh, brackets, I don't have kendo style kotes right now, but I recently bought them and it's on its way. <laughs> Good, thank you very much. Okay, so what he's talking about here is um, when you hold the sh when you grip the shinai, as you can see there's a kind of V-shape that make, that's made here between my forefinger and my thumb and same on the left hand and they should sort of roughly line up with each other and obviously it's a little bit difficult to do that um, whilst you're wearing the kote um, and it is especially if you've got kote that aren't super ergonomic um, if they're kind of older kote which tend to be sort of shaped like that and kind of force your hand into this position, which is what you're talking about. Uh, if you've got new kote on the way, I think you're going to find it a lot easier, obviously, especially when they've broken in a little bit. Uh, but the other thing I would say is what you tend to find, and what most people tend to find, is that one, once they're wearing the kote and they're actually got their bogo on, their adrenaline's pumping more and they've got their hearts beating faster and they tend to kind of slip into gripping the shinai tighter um, because there's more excitement going on because obviously they're wearing the bogu now. Um, so there's probably an element of that as well. Um, but you, you certainly um, should have the same image. Um, of course, you can't hold it in exactly the same position as you can um, when you're not wearing the kote, but you should have the same image in your mind as you're doing so, uh, and you'll, you'll, you'll end up on the right path, I'm absolutely sure. Um, next one. Hello, just wondering if there are any different meaning to the mune designs, uh, and if, they, if there are, can you explain, or is it just for decoration? So, 
this is on the door, um, the, 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 the Kendall door. The Mune is this section that protects, protects your test, uh, chest. Uh, there's lots of different designs that are available. Uh, we have two standard ones um, for most of our in-stock burger, um, but there's loads of different ones that we can also make um, for other, uh, like the order-made stuff. Um, there's absolutely no meaning to it. I mean, they, they do have meanings. Some of them have meanings, but they don't have like a, like, um, you know, they don't have a, like a, anything that's like, it's not like, it doesn't mean your rank or anything like that or mean anything about your Kindle. Um, like, they're, they're made to look like different things often. So, um, some of them are made to look like uh, pine trees or they're made to look like... Uh, wings or something like that one's one's made to look like a butterfly um but it, it's not like a serious super deep meaning that you have to worry about too much it's, it's really just for decoration much like uh much like the colored door uh it's just for decoration and isn't something anyone should ever judge your kendall by which i've ranted about before <laughs> okay uh next um hi andy absolutely love the show and channel thank you very much uh question i know that um i know that uh, Mune Suki is no longer legal, uh, but I believe I've seen some folks practicing it, not to score, but to create an opening as a setup for men. Is this legit? Uh, do people actually do it? Okay, there's nothing to stop me doing that, really. Um, not really. Uh, I'm pretty sure in the rules somewhere, and I'd have to sit down and go through them. Um, <laughs> Uh, there is actually something about intentionally attacking an area that isn't a uh, official datotsubui. Um, I'd have to look that up. Uh, but it's very hard to judge if somebody is actually trying to do the mune ski or actually trying to do the normal ski and just missed and hit the mune. Um, and yeah, I've heard about people trying to do it to create an opening but i don't i don't really follow that to be honest if you've got the opening to do munetsuki you've already got the opening to do men really um unless you're kind of jumping around the side or trying to do something like that um it doesn't work that well as a tactic in that in that respect um not 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 as far as i can imagine it anyway um so yeah, you don't. I've never. You never really see high level players do it, certainly, because um, it just doesn't work that well. Um, if you've got the chance to to do ski, well, why you, then perhaps it's better to actually do the regular ski instead of doing the mooned ski. So then you can hit men. There's much less chance of that uh, becoming successful. Uh, you're kind of muddy in the water for yourself by doing that, if you know what I mean. So um, yeah, I guess my opinion on that is it's. I guess you could do it, and it's unlikely you'd get penalised for it in the Shia, even if you were doing it on purpose, um, because it's hard to argue that you, you know, didn't miss the regular ski or whatever. Um, I, I, I expect most chimpanzees wouldn't pick up on it, but, um, but yeah, I just don't, I don't really subscribe to it as a super useful tactic. Thinking about it, to be honest, if that makes sense. Um, okay. Uh, now these next couple of ones are from the Kendo Show Early Access Group. Uh, there's a link down in this, the, the description, if I can get my words out. <laughs> down in the description. Um, it's free to join. It's a great group to be in. Obviously, um, you can post your questions in there. Uh, what's great about that group is loads of other people chime in with answers as well. So it becomes a bit of a discussion. And the other great thing about that, it is called the Early Access Group. And that's because when I do have uh, instructional videos... Um, that's where they get posted first before they go out for public release. So it's the first place you get to see the instructional videos. Um, so yeah, there's a link in the description. Uh, get get in the group if you're not in it already. Um, okay, first of all, while looking for coloured menhimo, uh, which Ken, which Kendo Star doesn't have, I can get them if you want them. If you want them, uh, then hit, just hit me up. I can I can get you coloured menhimo if you want. Um, I don't sell them because I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, I could sell them. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. I guess maybe I, I could do. Uh, I found coloured tsuba tsuka uh, tsuru. Uh, do decals and the like. Uh, uh, sorry, do decals and the like. So like the come on on the door. Um, at first I thought that these were just for fun, but then I saw them in Japanese videos too. Uh, maybe mainly for kids and teens. Uh, is individualization of equipment more common in Japan than it is in Europe? And are there any regulations about this? And second, is wearing a Zekken ma mandatory in a Shiai or does it depend just on the tournaments? 
announcement. Okay, so two things there. First, so about the sort of coloured bits and bobs. Uh, first off, the, 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 the door decals, it's generally a cam on, it's a circular um, sort of thing. Uh, I haven't got one in my door to hand, but um, it's actually a family crest that, which lots of people do have. Uh, sometimes it's a sticker, but you can actually have it painted on with enamel um, or, or lacquer. Um, and it's like a, it, it's kind of a family crest thing that. Um, it's not just decoration, it's like, it goes back to the tradition of, of samurai doing that actually. Um, like a uh, coloured tsubad, scarred sort of stuff like that. I mean, yeah, that sort of stuff. It's, it's mainly for fun decoration. There are some teams in Japan, kids teams, like uh, ju uh, not even junior high school, I'd say the um, primary school uh, that have like their team that will wear the coloured menhimo um, or they'll wear the, you know, uh, they'll have very, they'll have coloured door that all match, for example. Um, it's, stuff like that is just, it's just, it's just, it's just, visual stuff for fun, like you say. Um, or sometimes they use it, like say, to, to, as a team, so they've got a team look. Um, I did. I used to know of a club that had like green menhimo, they all wore green menhimo, for example. Um, and I saw another that all had yellow menhimo. It's, it's, you know, it, it, the useful thing about that is it's easy, in a Shia, in a kid's Shia in Japan, yeah, you could have like, thir like 12, 13 Shiaijo in a tournament, and there could be literally a thousand kids there. Right, and they're all in the Shi'ai. So as a, it's really, it's quite a useful tactic to give everybody bright yellow menhimo, so that you can tell from afar where your kids are and when they're on the Shi'ai Joe and stuff like that. Um, so that's that's another reason for it actually. Um, other stuff, uh, you don't see that sort of stuff with adults very much, to be honest. Um, you might see some people like just having a little bit of a different coloured tsuru or maybe a, a, a nice little different tsuba or something like that. Uh, but you know, um, it, it, it's not something that's so common um, with other, like bits and pieces like that. Coloured door are reasonably common though, um, on, the other, on the other hand. Um, in terms of uh, regulation, I wouldn't say it's more common in Japan, the, sorry, the individualization of equipment. I wouldn't say it's more common in Japan than it is in Europe. It's probably about the same. Um, and also, uh, the regulations, actually there are some reg regulations on it. Um, they're actually generally imposed by the, not by the All Japan Kendo Federation, but like the um, Junior High School Sports Federation and the uh, High School Sports Federation, they don't like you using the different coloured uh, tsuru and they got rid of the, they don't like them using the uh, coloured um, tsukagawa with the bit of the colour at the end of the tsukagawa and also the coloured chichikawa, actually they, they, they banned that as well um, and they also blacked, uh, sorry, they banned the black uh, membuchi, the full black membuchi, but they're, they're the only instances in Japan where those things are actually not allowed. Um, for primary school kids and for adults, it's it's totally, uh, it's, it's all fine. Um, and the other one, the other one actually that they don't, they don't, didn't want for, I think it was high school, but probably for junior high school as well is, um, they, there was a, a, a trend at one stage of very brightly coloured or different coloured kendogi and hakama. So like pink, and there was a lilac one um, and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, they, they generally got wiped out because they don't want, um, they don't want them to wear that. <laughs> I think it was going a bit too far at one stage, that's why. Um, I think that's why. I mean, nobody, nobody minds having like the coloured door um, or having different coloured tenugui. I mean, there's plenty of places you can, I think the Chichikawa is a nice place to do the um, customization as well. But you know, when somebody's turning up and they're, they're head to toe in pink, it, it, it is a little bit, uh, I think the I think the federations are feeling a little bit like, um, you know, it's kind of not being taken seriously enough by the youngsters. Um, so they want it, they don't want it to be treated too much like just sports for them. So there were, I think that reasoning was there as well. Okay, and the second question about is wearing a Zekken mandatory in Shi'ai or does it depend uh, just on the tournaments uh, announced? I'm pretty sure it's in here actually that you have to wear a Zekken. Um, or uh, Nafuda, I think it'll probably say in here, because that's the official word. Um, but uh, I might be wrong. Um, I'm not gonna sit and read it now, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but here's, here's the thing about Zekken, and this is something that's very, uh, 
uh, often looked over. Um, I do remember one of my senseis actually um, saying, not to me, but to another another person that I knew at the dojo that had come. He had he had a couple of sets of borgu and he, he came to Kendo one night using a. He'd swapped his bug in his bag, but he's forgotten to swap his Zekken over. And he came to the dojo. This is in Japan, um, without a Zekken. And, uh, well, Tarenim, as they say in Japan. Uh, not many people say Zekken in Japan. Um, nobody says Nafuda either. They say Tarenim. Um, so <laughs> he'd forgotten it anyway. Um, and uh, Sensei made him write his name on the Tare with uh, chalk. And he said that not having your name displayed clearly, especially as we have our faces sort of covered, is kind of uh, bad manners. He said it was wearing the Zekken was kind of manners so that everyone, you know, so you know who each other are, um, you know, especially as we're engaging in um, a, a sport that has the level of contact that Kendall does. Um, that having your name displayed and your dojo, obviously, or your affiliation displayed on your uh, Zekken um, was was actually part of Regi, uh, part of the manners in Kendo. So yeah, um, I think that's uh, that's another aspect too. Uh, and I kind of I I I I I've never read that in anywhere particularly official. But and like I say, this my my sensei said it, um, and I. Um, I kind of followed that way of thinking and I still believe that to this day, to be honest. I really do think that having the Zekken is kind of an important part of having the overall final appearance of the Kendall Borger. So, next one, and this is the last one. Uh, <coughs> this is a short one. Hi Andy, uh, will you be making uh, teaching videos, brackets, not rants, uh, about the Nihon Kendo Kata and perhaps explain how it relates to regular Shinai Kendo uh, since it uses swords and techniques that don't apply to the usual training? Uh, maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah, I probably will do at some point, to be honest. Um, I probably will. Uh, I f yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think, I think that would be good to do some, uh, kata videos, maybe. What do you think? Would you like to see some instructional videos about kata and how they relate to Shinai Kendo? Uh, leave me a comment down below. Uh, you can let me know what you think. Um, also, you can let me know any other questions that you have, what you'd like me to talk about or rant about in the next video. Uh, like I say, comment down below. That's what it's there for. Uh, don't forget, like, share and subscribe, all that sort of thing. And uh, most importantly, don't forget to do your shopping at kendostar.com. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's the web shop that I run, of course. Uh, it's all fantastic equipment. It's all selected by myself. Um, most of it's designed by myself specifically for the international market it's all top quality gear uh, the vanguard series the new v1 uh, borgu as well uh, those series of borgu are probably one of the most popular sets of borgu brands of borgu in the world right now um they really, really are uh, super popular because they are comfortable and they're protective uh, whilst not being heavy. Uh, sometimes I get the question actually about them. Uh, you know, I see these bulk sets are comfortable and protective, um, unlike rival brands. Um, but um, does that mean that it's heavier or something like that? No, it's not heavier. Uh, it uses modern materials, so it's nice and lightweight. It's more how we actually put it together rather than stuffing loads more of materials in it. So it's not much more, um, it's not It's not, not much heavier. Um, in fact, it, it's about the same weight, frankly, after I've, I've weighed them all. Um, it's about the same weight as a regular bulk set, frankly, a modern, regular modern bulk set, not a traditional bulk set, older bulk sets are really, really heavy. But these days, most bulk sets are reasonably light, um, less than five kilograms for the whole set, frankly. Uh, and I think, the, I think the Vanguard comes in at less than four, actually. So yeah, it's not even heavy. So yeah, uh, check them out. Uh, we've got an outlet sale on as well. It's ending soon though. So uh, make sure you snap up a bargain there. And that's all at kendostar.com. Uh, okay, with that being said, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next time.